Hi everybody, let's do an update on where I'm at on my standard elevator project. If you remember, I told you I was going to work on these silos first, and I was going to use the uh, uh, cement plant from Walters as the basis for that. So let me show you um, where I'm at. This is the best view of it, unfortunately, it's <laughs> when they're tearing down the elevators. I have another shot. I'll show you in just a second of where they're actually pulling down one of the uh, silos. Um, but as I zoom in here, I'll show you something I struggled with a little bit. So I think that those are steel bands around there. Um, the newspaper article said they were concrete. It doesn't look like it's concrete block to me because the vertical lines are pretty much lined up with each other. It's not like brick or concrete block. Yeah. So I think that those lines are just like reinforcing bands of steel, but I'm not sure. You can also see down here, it's like the like these are lined up and like maybe where they were tightening, you know, there was like it was like a turnbuckle thing. They were tightening. Maybe the same thing here. I'm not sure. And then when you look along the edge. And it's really difficult to see, but you can see all the little protrusions. So that to me looks like it, they are the, the bands that actually stick out from the block. So I'm struggling with how to model that. So I'll show you what it looks like if you just paint it gray. Here's what it looks like just a coat of spray paint. There's, it's just, there's no texture. I mean, uh, yeah, I can weather it, but still uh, it doesn't look like the real one. So I was really racking my brain how to figure out how to draw those lines or how to make those lines. I thought there's no way I can draw that many of them, keep them parallel on a round surface. So I went to my computer and I opened up Excel. You can see the two pieces on each side. I just kept playing with cells. I scrunched them down. I had fill color, the, the color of the lines. I just kept playing with it till I was fairly happy with the color but I didn't want to just like try to laminate paper on there so my thought was to print it out on um, tracing paper so tracing paper is much much thinner and this is what it looks like and this is tracing paper if you want to go buy some in the store and I laminated that to the model so in this picture I'm just uh, I've already printed out my uh, stuff on the tracing paper. I'm just using these scrap sheets to mask. So I did one section at a time. So I had eight sections. So I masked it off. I sprayed it with 3M spray adhesive. And then I already had the tracing paper cut to the right width. And then I put it on a <laughs> very generous, it's a very delicate procedure. And I can't say that it's perfect. But after it's weathered, and you have to take it into account that this isn't like a standalone model. It's going to be part of an entire, you know, sort of diorama type thing. I think it gives the effect uh, that I want. Anyhow, it, you can see that the, there's texture to it. So here's my model. <laughs> With the real picture in the background. Of course, it's a black and white picture. Just had to guess at the colors. Um... Yeah, you know, I don't know how tall these were. I don't know how wide these were. These weren't on the sandboard maps. So I just used my best guess. I think it's actually a little bit too tall. Uh, my, my own feeling, I think maybe it's just a, a hair too tall. Um, on the real picture, there's another thing that goes down here, like fills in. On mine, I just used a wood dowel. Uh, maybe not quite big enough. Um, to weather it, uh, I just kept on, I had some Tamiya white uh, powdered pastels and I just kept putting it on there, cover it with doll coat, uh, put some more on, cover it with doll coat, and you can see the, the lines in it. Again, it's not perfect, but I think it looks better, more like the model than the it would if I just left it all gray. I still have to make these vents. 
I've got some channel ordered. I went to the hobby shop and I bought some channel that didn't have the right size. So I just ordered a bunch of it from uh, Evergreen. Hopefully it'll get here in a couple days. Uh, but I'm gonna be pretty busy with family coming up anyhow. So I don't know when I'll get a chance to do it, but I'm gonna have to make all those, cut all those out and do it. Um, again, up here, I just sort of guessed at the colors. It looked like it was a light color, you know. Uh, you can see that on the real one, this roof didn't cover the third, the last one for some reason, so I did the same thing. Um, yeah. And I think this hole up here is where the pipe came in. Of course, this is when they're tearing it down. So I'll put a square here and then have a pipe coming over to the, the old elevator. So that's where I'm at right now. I'll keep you posted as I continue working on it. Here's a picture of them demolishing the silos. Don't see any steel bands in this picture, but the roof is covering a lot of it, and it's really not that clear of a picture. So this was in 1989, I think. Well, it's uh, Thursday evening, <laughs> and I got the channel in, so I'm going to start making those vents. And I thought you might be interested in how I'm going to do it. So after some trial and error, I decided the 266 was the best uh, one to, to use. Looked best on the model. So let me set the camera up so we can uh, sort of see how I do this. I first started cutting these out. And I'll show you how I do it here in a second. I mean, they weren't consistent. I didn't really have a good method of... <laughs> seeing how the same they were. So back here, these are all ones that I've cut out so what, that are the same. I'm lining them up against this ruler here, which I've got taped down. So I can tell that you know, if, the, if they're all the same. I need 16 of them. So if they're all over the place, it's gonna look kind of funny. So let me show you how I got them to be consistent. I'm not gonna say perfect, let's just say, fairly consistent where I don't think you'll notice any differences on the model. So when I got one I liked, I super glued it to my mat. You know, I mean, it'll pop off there pretty easy. Uh, maybe I won't be able to use it, but as a guide. So what I do is I make sure that I always start with a square end on the channel. And then I just, I've been, I draw it back. I look at it and I draw it back a little bit more when I get a pointed end on it then I sort of have to peel off the you know like the little <laughs> uh, not all the the plastic comes off it leaves like little burrs or whatever on it so I sort of peel that off My fingernail, I'll look at it. If I need to sand it some more, I will. That's what I'm left with. So then I put it down. Yeah, I got a little bit more burr there. Get off there. There we go. Got my chisel knife, which again, I had one of these, never used it until Boomer started talking about how great they were. In HO, they're probably more useful than N because he can use it to cut out windows. Um, there's no, this would be a huge end scale window. Uh, I can use it to cut out doors, you know, at least the you know door frames uh, on the sides, but really an end scale, it's limited. Still, it's a great tool. I'm really glad that uh, he turned me on to using it. So I line the end of it up. You see, I've got the grids here on there. So I've got it, I try to keep it as straight as I can. And then I just take my chisel and I look at it, try to keep it straight for when I press down. And half the time the thing shoots onto the floor and I have to pick it up. But if I'm lucky, it stays there. Now, it stayed there, but I dropped it. And so now I've got another one. So I'm going to finish making these. And what I'll do is I'll stick them to a piece of blue tape, 
I'll roll the blue tape around so the sticky side is up and I'll spray paint them all uh, tonight and tomorrow I'll glue them on. And remember how earlier in the video I talked about the lines on my um, model? Well, that's going to really help me keep them straight. Uh, so I'll glue one side, you know, eight in a row, and then I'll glue the other side up. And I will show you what that looks like when I'm done. Okay. Pretty much done with this. Uh, one mistake. You guys know I don't mind <laughs> putting out my own mistakes. I put this window in the middle of the entire length. I should have put it in the middle uh, from here to here. So it's a little bit offset. You can see on the real one, it looks like it's more in in the middle there. Of course, you know, it's not not big enough problem that I'm gonna rebuild it, but um, just something I noticed. So on to the next project. Everybody stay safe. So some people are afraid to make models because they're always, oh, I don't have enough information. I might screw it up. You can see this is a color picture. This is the only color picture I had. Uh, you can tell by it's yellow there. But look at the color of the uh, silos. Just like a gray concrete color. You know, now it's a gray day. It's not a very blue sky. But after I finished the model like I showed you a few minutes ago, my friend Trent Halbert showed me these pictures. That looks completely different. All these pictures were taken the same year. <laughs> so all taken in like 1988, 1989, right before it was torn down. Look at the color there. Then look at the color in this next picture. Also in this next picture, uh, that structure on the top has two windows. This is the first time I've ever seen this angle of it. So I only put one window back there. <laughs> so don't know if I'm going to rebuild it or not. But uh, I am going to try to modify the model a little bit to make it a little bit less gray. So I got uh, my airbrush out. It's really cold in the garage. But I was able to, uh, you know, give it a light overspray of like a tan yellow. Uh, you can see where these, where the laminated, where this sort of like bubbles up. Those will go down uh, when it, I can press those down. Uh, those won't be very noticeable. Uh, on the picture I just showed you, the ones my friend gave me, and also on the picture I had, there's like a big concrete patch, like right in here. I don't know, maybe got hit by a car or something. I don't know, but I'm going to add, I'm just going to brush paint that. And there's another one up in here. As you can see, I only put one window on this side. Um, that is not that big of a deal. Uh, I might be able to pop... Might just be able to rebuild that. Uh, I don't know. I'll see. Because <laughs> remember I told you the window on the other side was already uh, not centered correctly. Um, so I may just go ahead and bite the bullet and, and redo that before I do anything else. Anyhow, that's where I'm at. Uh, so pending my rebuild at the top, I'm going to start building the main elevator. Now I thought I'd show you this side. I do have a something going on up here. I'm going to have to fix that gap. Um, anyhow, pretty, pretty happy with it. Um, it's, uh, it's been a challenge. Everybody stay safe.